Breaking news! Malta introduced a law under which the multi-state now openly became accomplice to rogue casinos, not just in the conceal as previously. Most people probably already know that online casinos are applying a very predatory and shady business tactic to exploit their player base. That they often actually get assistance from the regulators themselves, the entity that should keep the system in balance and help players in case of disputes and misconduct of online casinos is probably lesser known. Today, we will discuss the system of online gambling. This includes the MGA, the regulatory authority from Malta, a new law that encourages fraud, corruption and an absolutely rigged system which exploits the players to an extreme degree. Gambling in the casinos was never an even level playing field. Players have always been severely handicapped. With the latest legislation from Malta, the balance of power has been shifted even further in favor of the casinos. In this video, I will give you an overview over the business practices of the Maltese casinos and afterwards I will also educate you about the new casino-friendly law Malta just made. But let's start from the very beginning. The so-called iGambling sphere in Malta has flourished over the past years and today contributes to over 12% of Maltese overall GDP. Stating the obvious, a government that makes a lot on gambling licenses and taxes from casinos has an interest in protecting one of the largest industries in the country. To make an analogy, at the European level and worldwide, Germany is also trying to help the automotive industry. This is because Volkswagen, BMW and Mercedes among others are based in Germany. Just as German politicians hold a protective hand over the car industry, Maltese politicians hold a protective hand over the gambling industry. However, the conduct of the Maltese government goes far beyond what the Germans are doing for Volkswagen. One often even reads about corruption and mafia-like structures. It has even happened that journalists who tried to drain the swamp and expose the schemes were killed. From my own experience, I can report that the corresponding articles are most likely true, based on what I have encountered so far when dealing with Maltese casinos. I would say that the reports may be still too gentle. In case you don't know, I used to be a professional player. I and my network of gambling friends have had countless problems and complaints against numerous often even well-known casinos due to non-payment of winnings and deposits. What are your experiences with casinos? Have you ever been scammed as well? Let me know in the comments below. The power imbalance between players and the house is already immense. The casinos have an enormous edge in most games. In addition, the games are intentionally designed to be addictive. Especially in Malta, player protection is also very underdeveloped. Players are often allowed to continue playing until ruin without relevant affordability checks. Often it even goes so far that the gambling addicts not only lose their savings but also get into high debt to continue gambling. So even in the interim conclusion we can already tell that the system is rigged. However, this by no means is everything. As a winner, you will definitely be banned and excluded from casinos. You are lucky if that's the only thing happening to you though. Usually, however, you have to fear for your winnings and sometimes also for your deposits. The terms of the casino are very vague and also unfair to the detriment of the players. So there are clauses like the casino is for recreational use only. A definition of non-leisure use of the site is searched for in vain. This is intentional, because this and other rubber paragraphs are then used completely arbitrary to confiscate deposits and winnings, without getting a precise justification or proof for the decision. Often you do not even get the information on what grounds the casino has made this decision. They just keep your money without any proof or exact reasoning. These are just deemed confidential 
and will not be disclosed to you. One would assume that the MGA, the Maltese Regulatory Authority, would intervene in such a blatant case of abuse and oblige the casino to repay the money. Far from it. If you are lucky and the complaint is not ignored, you will either be referred to so-called independent conflict resolution providers, which in almost every case decide in favor of the casino. No wonder they are at least paid by the casino. Often they are even casino affiliates, so anything but independent. When the MGA decides on the matter itself, the result is also almost always to the disadvantage of the players. According to the terms, you can sue only in Malta, where the court's costs are exorbitantly high. And in addition, all the lawyers I have consulted so far have always advised me against taking legal action because of the corruption in Malta. Moreover, you will probably not even find a local lawyer to represent you because all lawyers who are familiar with gambling law are already associated with the casinos and help, for example, with the application for gambling licenses. To the frustration of the online casinos, however, judgments in other EU countries were previously also accepted in Malta. If a player sued in court in Austria or Germany, for example, and won, the judgment could be enforced in Malta. So at least one had the chance of a fair trial if one is resident in an EU state with an operational rule of law. Unfortunately for the casinos, losses were often recovered. Not paying out winnings themselves is where the casinos are very great at. However, they also refund losses very reluctantly, so far only with court orders. Actually, there is even little reason for them to complain because usually the casinos were illegal in the other EU member states, but the operators still offered their product with non-existent player protection and the joker of not paying winnings, just in case a player gets lucky or is too smart. All this sounds quite extreme and unimaginable. I fully agree with you. Unfortunately, none of this is exaggerated. The next step, however, is even more shocking. And even I, who is used to a lot, would not have believed if someone had told me about it. Malta made a law basically shielding the casinos from other jurisdictions. Malta introduced new legislation to safeguard operators from foreign liabilities. The law supposedly aims to provide a secure and stable regulatory foothold for operators, but will have far-reaching implications outside the nation's borders. An increased number of lawsuits levied from abroad against Malta operators presumably has prompted the government to introduce additional legal protections. The amendment aims to shield businesses from potential liabilities arising from lawsuits initiated in foreign jurisdictions. Verdicts from foreign courts against MGA casinos are from now on no longer enforceable in Malta. Introducing such legislation exclusively benefits operators offering their services in Europe's grey market, skirting local restrictions to provide an alternative to regulated companies or to circumvent a gambling prohibition. Maltese providers are often subject to significantly fewer restrictions and they often rightfully draw the ear of local regulators. With the new bill, such businesses can operate with relative impunity. I fear that the change in law will encourage casinos under the Maltese Gambling Authority to extend their efforts to undermine efforts made by local regulatory bodies to offer citizens safer gambling entertainment platforms under the protection of domestic law. Overseas lost lawsuits are now be rendered invalid in the Maltese courts, thus granting MGA online gambling companies increased leeway to demonstrate the absurdity of the matter. It would be comparable to Germany declaring after the diesel scandal at Volkswagen, Volkswagen is a German company. All claims for damages field abroad are null and void, and we will reject all claims in our courts.
This law is also 99% not compatible with EU law, which is above national law. So this law will probably be overtuned soon. The only question is how long this process will take. It may well take years. Why is Malta still making such a bold and stupid move? Reason 1. Malta wants to protect one of its most important industries, namely online gambling. Reason 2. Losses of tax revenues as domestic online gambling regulatory bodies trend. Malta, of course, wants to continue to generate revenue from the gambling sector. However, these profits will be reduced if in the future other jurisdictions require their own licenses or do not recognize the Maltese license as valid, which in turn would mean that the revenue would now flow to the licensing country, for example Germany or Ireland, and Malta would go away empty-handed. That is why you have to maintain the grey slash black market and guarantee immunity to your own casinos. Reason number three. In Germany and Austria in particular, Maltese casinos have lost many lawsuits for the repayment of gambling losses in the player's home country. Malta wants to keep the money in the country with their own companies and not return it to the players. Expensive and largely lost court cases, including claims for damages, obviously reduce the online casino's revenues and thus also the earnings of the Maltese. What do you think about the new so-called legislation? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Watch this video next to learn how you get cheated in online poker.